Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's nice to meet you again on this video that I'm going to make about the Sabbath School lessons. Starting from this quarter, the title of our whole quarter on the second quarter is about the Great Controversy. And at this first meeting, the lesson that we are going to discuss on this coming 6 April is the war behind all wars. And as you can see at the screen, this is the cover of the Sabbath School book that we have in our hands regarding the war behind all wars, especially the Sabbath School entitled The Great Controversy. Furthermore, the theme verse or the memory verse that we ought to memorize on this lesson is taken from Revelation 12 verse 7 and 8. Translated from New King James Version, it says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. We live immersed in a conflict of galactic dimensions. Even if we are not aware or do not believe that this is possible, the conflict is real. The conflicting forces are spiritual, invisible to us. Ephesians 6 verse 19 says that. However, we can feel the effects of war, disasters, immorality, and death. Furthermore, it says, at stake was the very government of God. The loyalty of angels and unfallen worlds, today your loyalty and mine are at stake. Imagine, brothers and sisters, even our loyalty to God are also at stake along with the government of God. The beginning of the conflict, we are going to discuss about that in a minute and we will follow on with Revelation in heaven, continues with Revelation on earth, love strikes back and of course the last one is the conflict today. The beginning of the conflict, as it is written in Ezekiel 28 verse 15, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created, till wickedness was found in you. The fact that in Eden there was a being that incited Eve to distrust God, that is the serpent, implies a rebellion against God existed before humanity existed, according to Genesis 3 verse 1. And Jesus called this being that sows distrust between God and his creatures an enemy, which he identified as the devil. Recorded in Matthew 13 verse 39. The first question we should ask ourselves is, did God create the devil? That is, did God create an evil being? The Bible tells us that the devil is an angel called Lucifer. Isaiah 14 verse 12 recorded that. This angel was created perfect and beautiful. Ezekiel 28 verse 12 written that. He was exalted to the highest position, an angel could aspire to protective current, according to Ezekiel 28, verse 13 to 14. So Lucifer was a created being perfect and beautiful at the beginning. But then, if Lucifer was perfect, how did he become the devil? That's the question. How did the conflict between God and him begin? That's also the question. Here's the answer. God granted him, Lucifer, like all his created beings, freedom of choice. You must underline this. God grant all his created beings freedom of choice and inexplicably, Lucifer decided to rebel. So it was Lucifer's own decision to rebel against God and aspired to occupy the throne of God. Not only he rebels, he also wants the throne to he also wanted the throne of God himself. This is recorded in Ezekiel 28, verse 15, and also Isaiah 14, verse 13 to 14. Furthermore, the rebellion in heaven, according to Revelation 12, verse 4, part A, its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. It is his desire, the devil, to usurp the throne of heaven. Lucifer raised doubts in the angels about the justice of the divine government. Weren't they all free? 
why submit to severe and perhaps unjust or capricious laws, says the devil or Lucifer himself at the beginning. And then it happens that Lucifer became Satan, the accuser, recorded in Revelation 12 verse 10 and also in Job 1 verse 6, 9 until 10. He rejected all of God's loving calls to change his attitude. So, brothers and sisters, if God is still calling you to change your attitude, please, please answer him and change your attitude, of course. Let's go. Furthermore, the rebellion become an open conflict, a war where each angel had to make their decision. Wow. So, starting from an unseen to an open conflict. One third of the angels followed Satan, while the rest remained faithful to God. Revelation 12, verse 4, part A. So, today the war continues. Satan is still active. He tries to drag every person to rebel against God. There are only two sides. Remember, brothers and sisters, there are only two sides. Those who want to obey God's law or those who reject it. The decision is ours. And we should follow what is written in Deuteronomy 30, verse 11, 16, 19, and also what is written in Joshua 24, verse 15. Joshua said, Choose you this day to whom you should worship. But for me and my house, I and my house will serve the Lord. May we will stand along with Joshua and said, Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the story of redemption written by Ellen G. White, page 17, said, The great God could at once have hurled this art deceiver from heaven, but this was not his purpose. He would give the rebellious an equal chance to measure strength and might with his own son and his loyal angels. In this battle, every angel would choose his own side and be manifested to all. If God had exercised his power to punish this chief rebel, these affected angels would not have been manifested. Hence, God took another course, for he would manifest distinctly to all the heavenly hosts his justice and his judgment. Let's see what God will do next. That rebellion continues on earth. And he said, Who told you that you were naked, says God? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Recorded in Genesis 3 verse 11. And we can see, God created angels in a sinless, perfect environment. Likewise, God created humanity in a perfect environment, free from sin. We can relate to that in Genesis 1 verse 31. But then, just as it happened with the angels, God also created us with the power to choose freely. Wow, the freedom of choice is also given to our first ancestors, Adam and Eve could exercise that freedom, he gave them a simple order. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2 verse 17. So that is a simple order. But yet, our first ancestors broke that order. That was the only point where Satan could make them doubt. Deviously, he achieved his goal. Adam and Eve doubted God, disobeyed him, and turned away from the source of life. Recorded in Genesis 3, verse 6, 9 until 13, and verse 19. Adam opened the door for sin to enter, and thus death passed to all men. That's what Romans 5, verse 12 said. Since then, we live in a world marked by pain, illness, and death. Are we all paying for Adam's sin? No. We each pay for our own sin, for all have sinned and fell short and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23. Love counters. Let's see. This is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent this His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Written in 1 John 4 verse 10. Even before announcing the consequences of disobedience, God communicated to Adam and Eve that there was a plan for their redemption, recorded in Genesis 3 verse 15. And humanity had voluntarily separated itself from the Creator, but far from abandoning, abandoning His ungrateful children, 
God revealed his true character by loving them beyond belief. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son, that is Jesus Christ, so that whomever believe in him shall inherit, shall have everlasting eternal life. And then, death did not have to be the eternal destiny for the sinner. Jesus showed his love by paying the price of sin with his life. Written in Romans 5 verse 8. And this is the most important part, I think. There is nothing in us that makes us worthy of God's love, brothers and sisters. However, with every drop of blood that Jesus shed at Calvary, God tells us, I love you. How did Jesus show us his love? Let's see furthermore. Jesus created everything that exists, John 1 verse 3. He became a creature, John 1 verse 14. He went through hardships, suffering, hunger, and pain like us, according to Isaiah 53 verse 3 and also Mark 11 verse 12. He was tempted like us, as written in Hebrew 4 verse 15. Being righteous, he willingly suffered for our sins, according to what is written in 1 Peter 3 verse 18 and John chapter 10 verse 17 to 18. By dying and resurrecting, he assured us of eternal life in his company, according to written what is written in Romans 6 verse 3 to 4. And all this was just for love. First John 4 verse 10. He have done everything that he could do so that we may see his loving kindness. The conflict today. Therefore, he is able to save completely, to save completely, brothers and sisters, those who came to God through him, because he always lived to intercede for them, written in Hebrews 7 verse 25. So, today, Jesus is interceding for us in the heavenly sanctuary, according to what is written in Hebrews 9 verse 24, and also Hebrews 7 verse 25. By virtue of his blood shed on the cross, Jesus presents us before the Father and before all the inhabitants of the universe as just perfect people worthy of occupying a place in heaven through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are worthy to occupy a place in heaven. Therefore, we are invited to approach God with confidence through Jesus, according to Hebrews 4 verse 15 to 16. Jesus wants us to count on him for every need in our lives, according to what is written in John 14, verse 13 to 14. Where there is fear, he brings peace. Where there is guilt, he brings forgiveness. Where there is weakness, he brings strength. Jesus' greatest desire is to live with us eternally, according to what is written in John 17, verse 24. The question is, is this also your greatest desire. May this is also be our greatest desire to live along with Jesus Christ eternally. This is the last quotation for this study. Taken from the Minister of Healing, written by Ellen G. White, page 193, it says, When temptations assail you, when care, perplexity, and darkness seem to surround your soul, Look to the place where you last saw the light. Rest in Christ's love and under his protecting care. When sin struggles for the mastery in the heart, when guilt oppresses the soul and burdens the conscience, when unbelief clouds the mind, remember that Christ's grace is sufficient to subdue sin and banish the darkness, entering into communion with the Savior who will enter the region of peace. So, brothers and sisters, in this great conflict between good and evil, between Satan and God, let's continue to enter into communion with the Savior so that we will remain in the region of peace. God bless you all, as he also bless me. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen.